Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to keep on working on our River Arts Cafe small business website. And we did a lot of content in the last video, just putting a lot of the HTML in. So in this one, we'll just tackle the footer, which is only going to take a quick second or two. And then we can start working on the overall styling of this page. And I'll recommend that we go from the outside in or top to bottom approach. So this is the HTML that I got so far, just finished off with pretty much everything. This div down here is the end of my promo items. In fact, I'll take away that line space so they're kind of grouped up there. And then the last real content on our, our page is a footer. Let me scroll this up just a little bit so you can see that better. So we've got an opening and closing footer. And the closing div down here, by the way, this div is for our main content not to be confused with our container div. And it's not a bad idea to maybe even put some comments here from time to time so we know that this is the end of the main content. And this is the end of the container wrapper. There we go. So you don't want to go ahead and delete a closing div thinking it was an accident, but it was actually kind of important. Now our footer, actually, and our footer should really be outside of the main content. Depends on how you want to look at this, of course. But our main content is the element that has this background image of the cafe, and our footer is really not a part of that. So easy enough fix to make. I can just cut that footer out, bring these elements back up, and I'll put my footer right there beneath the closing main content. And within the footer, I'm going to have a simple paragraph. And this paragraph is going to have uh, basically some bogus copyright information and a uh, and an address. Here we go. So I've got some basic information. I'm using an HTML entity to represent a copyright symbol for the River Arts Cafe. I have no idea if this is a real business or not. Um, uh, I don't think it is. It's kind of a play on a few different words. So if there really is a River Arts Cafe, maybe we should contract uh, contact them and see if we can't uh, make them a client to make a new website for them. And of course, we've got our address down here. And I used a couple of break tags. Break tags are internal breaks, basically, often used in a paragraph. They break to a new line, just like you might do in Word, a shift enter to create a line break. So I've got one paragraph with my information, but I did a couple of line breaks to also have the phone number on a separate line. We could have done a separate paragraph also. That should be a closing paragraph symbol. So let's make sure we got that one. So there's my paragraph, and there is my footer. So my HTML, for the most part, is complete. There's a couple things I might have to tweak on here when working on the print and the mobile versions. But as things stand, we're in pretty good shape. So let me go ahead and save this, head back over to my browser. And of course, this is our finished um, website, how it's looking there. But let's see what our work in progress looks like. And there it is. So there's our. Navig navigation menu, H1, paragraph. Of course, my image isn't loading because I need to get that in the right folder, so I'll take care of that when we get when we get to that part. Um, of course, there's our three products. So this is what you should expect from a web page that has absolutely no styling. Basic black times H uh, text on a white background. So now we can start to tackle things from top to bottom and or outside in. So I do need to make a style sheet. I've referred to a style sheet called Small Cafe CSS, but I haven't created this CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. File, Save As. There's my HTML, and I will just go ahead and call this one. Actually, am I using any subfolders here? I am. Yeah, I'll stick that in there. Smallcafe.css. So got that CSS file saved. Oh, a little error. I will check into that. Let's see how things work. But I do need to make sure that I've got my subfolder. Now, whenever there's a, a concern that maybe is my CSS file connected, it's really easy enough. We can just head over to the uh, body and put in a some background color so it really jumps out to us. And let's do this properly. Color. Actually, let's do a background color. And I'm actually using one uh, that I found in advance. So let me save that, head back over to the browser, and refresh. And I can see that there's a problem. So there was a mistake somehow in probably in the saving of my small cafe CSS file. 
There we go. I just went through, didn't have to move anything. I just made sure I resaved each file specifically. And let's do another save, browser refresh. And there we go. So now we have an obvious connection between our CSS file and our background, I'm sorry, and our web page. Now before the body, I also like to put in a reset rule. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to set all margins to zero, all padding to zero, and all borders to zero. So that's a pretty simple CSS rule, reset rule to set defaults to zero, basically. And if you're doing a zero, you don't need to put in anything like PX or percentage. And now we can start to work on our container. Now our container, according to the directions, is going to be a set width of a fixed width web page. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this 960 pixels. And I'm gonna do a margin, zero PX, and auto. So this will center the content horizontally on the page. In the short term, if you're curious, I can put a simple border on here, two picks solid red so you could see it. And now when I refresh, you'll see that I clearly have a centered parent container. So now that we've got our CSS file connected safely and we can see that it's working, let's go ahead and tackle a big chunk of the styling in the next video.